the network. Uh, I wish I I had more insight. I I I, I guess Daniel Ek is saying something that he knows. I want to give him the benefit of the doubt, but there is also that airing on the side of he just might be pleasing investors, like you just stated. You know, he was also quizzed on after the report. He got had an interview with Music Ally, and they quizzed him on the new artist fundraising pick. So I'm not sure if you're aware. Obviously, last month we talked about they're going to add in this like donation tipping feature. And it's now available. Instead of the artists like track pick, you can choose on your Spotify for artists to have an artist fundraising pick where you can put a link to a charity or a link to your Cash App or PayPal. And he was asked whether this is going to stick around. Because that's the big thing everyone's wondering is is it going to be taken out again once this um, crisis is over? And he seemed to indicate that nothing's set in stone, but the feedback has been very positive. Over 50,000 artists have used it so far. So he was saying there's certainly no reason to take it out. Yeah, so the question is like, is this opportunistic or is this a true a true uh, add-on and feature? And when I look at it, what I thought was brilliant about that story was actually from the cash app angle, honestly, and how they're incentivizing artists with that extra $100. Um, yeah, for the, for the first, there's a million dollars, isn't there? And then... Everyone, well, the funds you use to cash out get the hundred dollar bonus if they get donations. Yeah, like that. That's the viral loop and how you want to build uh, additional, uh, you know, user user base when it comes to a uh, platform. So I love the fact that Cash App is doing that just from a business standpoint. I think obviously it's going to work because why wouldn't people not go ahead and get that extra hundred dollars? Is banks do that all the time too, right? You open an account, you get an extra two hundred dollars if you jump through all these hoops for six months. But um. I think I think that's really cool when it comes to the fundraising feature, though, in general. I actually kind of didn't understand it. It just felt like fluff for me. Well, I'm, I'm not a fan of it. Um, I, I think, I, I think um, other pl- platforms are doing it better. So the example for Spotify, you've got a cho- they give you a choice, obviously. You can either choose links to a charity or you can put your cash app or PayPal in. This is presenting artists with like a difficult dilemma here because obviously – Naturally, the bigger artists are going to plump for the charity you know, to help raise money and support. And obviously, fans are going to look upon that very favoringly. If you're an independent artist, you've got this like, dilemma whether you want to, you know, how you want to present yourself to your fans. Because obviously, a lot of fans probably think you've got a lot more money than you actually do. And they actually might really need this money, but might feel pressured into giving to charity instead on, on the page. So this, this, is a very, this becomes a very big dilemma for them, like a little guilt tripping. Whereas other platforms... Like TikTok has just got straight up, just got a charity donation feature. So you choose a charity and then money goes to them. There's no like, because you can already get money through tipping live on that platform. Mm-hmm. So they've done it right, just giving you a charity way. And SoundCloud's support button feature lets you choose a link. You're in complete control. That could be a charity. That could be, you know, PayPal or Cash App. But that could also just be a link to your website to sell your merch or to Bandcamp. You've got a lot more control with SoundCloud. And with TikTok, there's already best of both worlds. But Spotify has given you this very difficult problem about how you want to present yourself and your fans. So I don't think it's been handled the best way. Well, that's why I was wondering, like, why was, why did they even add it? I wasn't familiar to everybody else added it. So maybe, okay, now we want to keep, keep up with the wave of what everybody else is doing. Of course, there's a lot of copycat. But at the end of the day, I don't, that, that, yeah, that's not the artist's responsibility. Like if they could, because you could very well say through your own tipping feature, you could say, I'm going to donate all this to charity. Mm. It doesn't have to be a charity specific feature. So that is weird. But at the end, but why would we expect Spotify to do anything else? Right? <laughs> they, it's, mm. when, something like this, you look at TikTok and all the other platforms, they're doing what you said, where it's kind of the onus is on them to, to set up the system and handle that. Spotify has repeatedly, when it benefited them, put all the onus on the artist where it seems like we're doing something good, but it really is giving all the work, for the good to them. Like they get the good of, hey, we brought this feature here. There's the yeah. PR. We're done. Right? <laughs> and now all the work is on the artist. So like that's, that's just how the platform has moved for the last five years, it seems like at least. 
But well, Daniel Lake obviously admitted that they rushed this feature out because they needed to get it out because everyone else was sort of like doing it or thinking about doing it and they just need to have something in place so they're responding to the crisis. But the way it's structured, you know, you can either choose like GoFundMe or straight to Spotify's COVID-19 project or you put PayPal or Cash out. There's such few like options and you know... Oh, you... Cash. I didn't realise... <laughs> So then you can get in bed with their specific project too. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's it's all carefully it's all carefully planned. Yeah. That's yeah. Crazy. Oh, this was this was so rushed. We didn't even think about it, which is a nice scapegoat for it being done well. The accusations, like what we we're talking about right now, why this this kind of lends towards your own political connects or reasoning or whatever you're doing. So yeah, we can always lean on. Well, we just rushed this. We didn't really think it through. Because um, Bobby Ozinski did an article. Yeah, Bobby Ozinski did an article for Forbes saying that he hopes that you know it doesn't put artists under too much pressure and that fans may look upon them, you know, for the altruistic reasons. You should, you know, give you know give to charities instead. But some fans may look upon it unfavorably to be asking for money for artists. So you just got to hope that the balance is there. But yeah, that's the reason for fan education, man. Like we need these yeah. fans to understand that artists really don't make money like that. But even more so, we need these artists to like quit parading around as if they have more and not being afraid to say we only have this much right now. Yeah, they right? they shouldn't feel guilty for asking for it on there. And this is what this kind of adoption of it could indicate that they, they might like it's not the best way to handle things. Yeah, I think somebody at some point will be more open about it. Actually fair. Fair enough, Cardi B was pretty open about that. And even when she wasn't in a, a rut, because sometimes people will come more open about those things when they're in a rut. But I remember a year or two ago, Cardi was explaining how she puts her own money up for, for the show she was doing, and she was paying 300 k for this, and like her outfit maintenance caused this, and she was just putting that out there. But she she's, she's kind of a a rare bird where it doesn't seem like she hides much or it allows any of those airs to come onto her to, to back back. But I think if a few more artists really start to do that and just make it clear, fans will know, Hey, I want to support my artists that much more, more um, that much more. Now, if there's a way to do that without bringing the, the record label side of things now, because then it'll be even um, better because obviously I think a lot of fans would be, they would be shocked, disgusted, surprised if they really knew, right, what the splits and what their where their money went when it comes to them thinking they give, they're giving to an artist in most cases. Hmm. And especially, so to give more information on the TikTok one, um, obviously you can already get tipped via live streams like directly you know, as a creator. So they've chosen to focus purely on you know, raising money for, you know, certain organizations with these donation stickers. So um, they, they use the hashtag double your impact. So if, you, if you're if you a creator, you can put a sticker on your story and you can choose which, um, you as a creator choose where it goes to. So at the moment you can go to CDC Foundation, James Beer Foundation, Meals on Wheels, Music Cares, um, National PTA, the Actors Fund, there's a few more as well. So you get to choose where it goes to out of those and you obviously click the button and obviously choose how much you want to donate. TikTok's going to match that donation as well up until May 27th, whatever you put in, TikTok will also put in. Nice. I think so it's just a much smarter way of doing it. The, and the, yeah, you can essentially market it as an influencer where it sounds like you can really put multiple out there and bring attention to multiple versus having to choose one and have a, a specific space where it belongs for a given amount of time. Am I hearing that correctly? Yeah, each video could be different. You could choose a different one for that. The, but you, you get to choose where your yeah where the donation goes to on that particular video, not the not the uh, user. Yeah, I like that. I like that. And <laughs> honestly, giving and all those types of things are so trendy on TikTok. And we had this one campaign that had to do with the Australia fires, right? Mm -hmm. And <laughs> we start the Australia fires I, was were actually still going on, but it had been a news story for maybe just a few weeks or whatever. And not only were they still going on, yes, they were at the tail end, 
when the fires are over, there's damage that's there, right? Uh, the users on TikTok, a lot of these kids, they're like, I don't really want to do this because, you know, that's kind of old news. It's, the trend is over. No yeah. one, they, they didn't, they weren't able to associate the fact that, yeah, this thing created damage. It's not over just because it's not being spoken about, right? It's, it, this is something that um, it needs money raised for, for some time and it's going to be happening for some time. So they have an, a detachment for, from that. But on the inverse of that is, they really go hard in those scarce windows yeah. because of the trend, right? And, and make it cool and it makes them look good. They're very, without knowing it, they're very uh, aware of PR. I'll, I'll say that, like for their own profiles. It's the network. <laughs>